There's been rumours for ages that Apple is planning on building a car and I've actually done some digging and found out that it's going to happen. It's going to become a reality and it's actually called Project Titan. That's an appropriately dramatic sounding name, but it's going to be dramatic this car because the features this car is going to have is going to blow your mind totally. How do I know that? Have I got a crystal ball? No, it's not because of that. It's because I've trawled the patent office and I found loads of really cool ideas and concepts that Apple has patented for a car. And in this video, I'm going to talk you through all those different things that they've patented, the best, most exciting ones. And it's going to completely revolutionize cars in the future. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. And this really is going to be wow, believe me. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Before we get into the meat of the video, let's just fully understand what a patent, or if you're in America, you're probably calling it a patent, actually is. So for that, let's refer to Google. A government authority or license conferring a right or title for a set period especially the sole right to exclude others from making, using, or selling an invention. Essentially what it means is that inventors can actually legally protect their ideas so other people can't steal them. And that's basically what Apple is doing, so that other people can't steal these ideas which it plans to use on its cars. Manufacturers do this all the time and it gives you a clue what their cars will be like. For instance, Jaguar Land Rover had 125 new patents for its new Range Rover. Right, now let's look at some of the Apple patents. So this is the first one that I found. It's like a child's drawing of a car. The interesting bit though is the stripe across the middle. Yeah? You see that actually signifies a screen, like a phone screen, that can display stuff. So rather than just a metal body panel that's been sprayed with paint, you're going to get an OLED screen on your car's bodywork. Now they go further at showing what could be displayed on there. So the first thing to look at is this. Do you know what that is? Well, I think that's a speedometer. So you could display a speedometer on your car's exterior so other people could see how fast you're going, which wouldn't be ideal if you just whiz past the police, would it, if you're breaking the law? Another image we see is this. It's like someone's just been doodling, really. But actually that shows that you will be able to just display various patterns on the screen, which forms part of your car's bodywork. And then the next one has some signs. You can see a stop sign there, and something that looks like a witch's hand, though I think that's more supposed to be like flames. The idea behind this is that you should be able to have a car's bodywork, because it's a screen, being fully customizable with whatever image you might want to show. I mean, it's completely nuts, really. Now, it might be a little bit hard for you to get your head around what this could look like in reality from just looking at these pattern drawings, which are very, very basic. So what we've done is drawn up an image of a car to show you what it will look like with screens as body panels. Now, the shape of the car is not what the Apple car will look like. I've just used that as an example, but how the screens could work is very much what we could see in reality. So displaying all sorts of messages or images, or of course, patterns. Obviously, this feature is gonna put the car wrapping business out of action, isn't it really? Why would you ever need to get your car wrapped when you can just change the look at it with a simple download of a wallpaper for your car? Now, customizing your car is one thing. The real benefit of this system is being able to warn other drivers of any emergency maneuvers you might be making. For instance, having a warning sign pop up if you're suddenly having to make an emergency stop. Now let's move on to the next patent, and it's this. Can you tell what that is? Now to me, it looks a little bit like the anatomy of the eye that you drew in biology class at school. And it's sort of along those lines. So basically, what this shows is that Apple is working on a LiDAR system for its car. Now, LiDAR is a bit like radar, except for instead of using sound waves to identify objects in the distance, it uses light waves. And it just allows for improved accuracy over radar. Now, a lot of manufacturers are currently working on LiDAR systems. And Nissan says that in the future, all its cars will get them. Also, Hyundai recently revealed its Ionic 5 Robo Taxi, and that has LiDAR as well, which enables it to drive itself without knocking people over and crashing into things. Now, that car is actually going to go into production and be produced and used in the real world. But Apple are going one better. See, rather than just having a LiDAR sensor on the car, it's also going to have LiDAR reflectors fitted to its car, and that's what this 
particular patent is all about. And that'll make it much easier for the other manufacturers that have LiDAR to recognize its car, which will make its car even safer. These next patent drawings are more evidence that Apple is working on its own car. Because of course, to get into your Apple car, you're not gonna wanna use a boring old key. You're gonna use your iPhone or your iWatch, aren't you? Simple. And that's what all these drawings are suggesting about how you pair the watch to the car and how you pair your phone to your car. I mean, it's nothing new, this. Tesla, you can open it using your phone. It's all done for NFC, near field communication. You just scan your phone next to the car, reads it, and it lets you in and wants again to start it. However, there's rumors that Apple is gonna go one step further because it doesn't wanna just copy manufacturers. It wants to lead and innovate. And it's apparently working on face recognition to let you into your car and to start it. The next patent is all about climate control. So how the heck is Apple gonna revolutionize climate controlling cars? Well, we've got this diagram here, which doesn't look all that amazing really, does it? You've got zonal climate control, nothing new. You've got air heating or cooling, once again, nothing new. The interesting thing comes on the next pattern slide. So have a look at this. Now if you zoom in, you will see something that says body part temperature. What does this mean? Well, rather than you just setting your temperature in the car, Apple, wants it to be set automatically for you so you're as comfortable as possible. And not just you as a whole, but bits of your body are at their optimum temperature. So this body part analyzer should be able to see how hot your head is. And if it's a little bit over hot, it can blow some cold air to cool you down. But let's say while your head is hot, your feet are freezing. Well, it'll automatically register that and make sure there's some warm air going to your feet so that overall you are in the optimal temperature. Sounds luxurious. There's another thing they're going to be doing as well, because they're not just going to rely on blowing hot and cold air about the place. That's just too basic. Instead, they're going to control the sun as well. Yes, Apple wants to control the sun. Now, it's going to do this through tinted glass, and not just any old tinted glass. It's going to use glass like you get with those sunglasses, you know, with transition lenses, which get darker when it's bright and lighter when it's dark. Now, some manufacturers already allow you to change the tint on the sunroof, but it's usually either just dark or light, for instance, on the BMW iX. Apple will be able to vary it completely so that it can alter the amount of light coming in to heat the cabin up or cool it down, depending if it requires shade. That's not all though, because you don't just want to do it to all windows at once. You want to be able to control lots of different sections of the car. So you can alter the amount of light coming in in different parts. So you can heat and cool various bits depending on what each occupant requires. It's clever, huh? This next patent is a variation on the theme of shading. And you know how you have some visors in cars which you'll obviously put down if the sun suddenly gives you glare or maybe even if you're dazzled by an oncoming driver who's left their headlights on too bright. Well, in the Apple car, you won't need any sun visors. Because of the clever transition lens style glass in the car, they'll actually be able to blank out various parts where you might get dazzled. So if you're looking around and you look over there and the system thinks, oh no, you're gonna get dazzled, it can shade that area to prevent it from happening. This next pattern solves a problem that not many people have probably thought about with the advent of self-driving cars. Now, a lot of manufacturers have shown self-driving cars. One of the key features of them is that you can rotate the front seats around so that the rear occupants can actually look and talk to the front seat occupants. You know, there's been concepts from Mercedes, Mini, which feature this kind of optional seating arrangement. But what the heck happens if there's an accident? Well, Apple has come up with a solution and this is it. Yes, people, what you're looking at is an airbag that deploys from the roof in the event of an accident. So if you're in that kind of lounge seating position, you don't all just slam together. Brilliant. This next pattern Apple has registered is simple yet brilliant. I'm surprised no one has thought of it before. And here it is. So what you're looking at there is an adjustable seat belt buckle. So you'll effectively be able to relocate where the buckle for the rear seat belts actually are mounted. Now this is perfect because at the moment it's a one size fits all scenario. So for some people, the seat belt buckle is behind them. That's if they're slightly larger of size. So it's a bit hard to get at and uncomfy. With this system, you'll be able to move it along so that you've got room to fit your seat belt easier. Have a look at this next pattern drawing. See what that is? It actually relates to gesture controls. Nothing new, I hear you say. 
BMW has been doing it for ages. And indeed, my M3 has gesture controls. So I use it for increasing and decreasing the volume and for dismissing or accepting a phone call. The only problem with the BMW system is that sometimes you, know, you scratch your head and it, it'll change the music track or something like that, which is a bit annoying. Hopefully Apple can make it work better, especially considering what they're planning on doing with it. You see, if you look at the diagram again, what it's showing is some directions. And this is all about when the cars are self-driving. So you can just be sat there like that and the car will present you with options of which direction you can take. And then you'll just be able to choose which one. And obviously you'd want it to get it correct, otherwise you could end up going down the wrong road. No one wants that. People do want self-driving cars though. Thing is, they're still a long way off. So this kind of technology, it's more Apple just like staking a claim rather than saying this is gonna be in our Apple car right from the get-go. Probably something they'll do as an over-the-air update later in the future when all the legalities have been sorted out. This next patent is all about charging. As you can see, the diagram shows how a charging station can actually automatically connect to a parked car so you don't have to get out and mess around with plugs and all that kind of stuff. Now, once again, this is nothing new. Tesla has done a prototype of an automated plug-in system. Though Tesla's one looks a little bit too sexual. In fact, if Tesla actually put that thing into production, I bet there will be some people who have to call the paramedics because they accidentally slipped and got impaled on Tesla's prehensile charging cable. Now this next diagram moves the game on ever so slightly. So what it shows is cars connecting to each other in convoy to charge from one another. Now, as you know, with the Hyundai Ionic 5 and with the Kia EV6, you can use their vehicle to load system to charge other EVs from their batteries. Apple will want to go on further and allow you to be able to do that when you're on the move. So cars will be able to hook up to each other while they're driving down the motorway to pass charge between different vehicles. It will be a little bit like refueling fighter jets in flight. This final pattern that I found, which could eventually be used on the future Apple car, isn't something being fingered. What it signifies is a type of fabric which has LEDs underneath the surface. Now the idea with this isn't to just shine mood lighting to the seat fabric. It's once again allowing you to personalize the interior of the car. Much in the way that you have a screen on the exterior of the car which can show images, you can use these little LEDs to actually shine patterns through the seat. So if you don't like your interior design, you can change it slightly. As well as patterns, you could have text displayed on the seats for whatever you might want it to say. So hopefully there'll be none of that nonsense like when Porsche charges you an extra thousand pounds to have the Porsche logo in embossed on your seats. You'll just be able to do it yourself in your Apple car. Now, in addition to all the patent stuff I've just explained, there's further evidence about Apple moving towards building its own car. You see, other tech manufacturers have tried to build electric cars in the past and failed. An example is Dyson. The reason they've failed is that it's really difficult to build a car and really expensive. So what Apple are probably going to do is partner with someone that's either in the process of or have already built an electric car. Now, interestingly, Apple subcontract a Taiwanese firm called Foxconn to actually build its iPhones. And Foxconn has just revealed a bunch of electric cars. Here they are. Now, they're imaginatively titled the Model C and the Model E. Can't guess where they got the naming idea from, but they're good looking cars and they're real cars. So these could be used as the platform for the future Apple car. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of the tech that I've explained in this video. Do you think it's a hit? Are there any other ideas that you'd like to see on a future Apple car? Now, if you want to watch some more videos, click on those windows there. And if you click on that box there, you're going to get an amazing surprise.